It's Pete Mills Musicals. I'm Pete Mills here with Kara Reichel. This is the Evergreen Podcast Musical, and we've still got a lot of story to go. So we're going to dive right in. And now, Evergreen, Chapter 2. Is that Maya? Yes, Yama, it's me. My eyes get worse and worse. Do you know I looked for you when I was telling my stories, and I couldn't find your face among all the others. I'm sorry. I was helping Mother. You don't have to be sorry. I forget sometimes you're past 5,000 days now. Am I really that old? Yes, I've kept count. Why do you count, Yama? Because I want to know when it's a holiday, of course. But does it really matter? Why this day? Tradition, I suppose. So it's true, there's nothing special about today? We make it special, Maya. It's special because we choose to celebrate it. It just seems strange to me. Of course it does. It's your 13th holiday. That was when your mother stopped believing, too. Mother stopped believing? Of course. Anya used to ask all the same questions of me, and she wouldn't listen either. But why? Who knows? I suppose she just needed to see for herself. But what did she see? Look there beyond, in the distance. What's there? Rocks, sand, dirt. Nothing much. I don't think that's true. If there wasn't something important, you wouldn't spend so much time looking. There are journeys we all must take on our own, Maya. Your mother had to find her own way, and I think you do, too. Why don't you come back inside now? I like it better out here. No Joshi to bother me. All right, then. But don't stay out too long, Maya. Just another minute. But Maya stayed outside much longer than a minute. She studied her father's map until the sun had set completely, and only the light of Mother's lantern was left. By the time she went back inside, the fire had died down and everyone was exhausted. But she had made her decision. She waited until the whole tent was sleeping, quietly gathered her things, and set off on her own. Or so she thought. Joshi was far too excited to fall asleep, which was why he noticed a shadow quietly creeping out of the tent. In fact, it was a shadow that suspiciously resembled his sister. Where could she be going at this time of night and with a knapsack? Joshi knew what he had to do. Stealthily, he gathered up supplies and followed her. It was not difficult to find Maya's trail across the moonlit sands, and soon he could see her ahead in the distance. She would duck and freeze until she turned around and continued on her way. Moving as quietly as he could with his own heavy pack, Joshi slowly gained ground. He had almost caught up when a clank from his pack caught her ear and she spun around. Joshi dropped to the ground and covered himself with his cloak, doing his best impersonation of a rock. Maya was not fooled. She stalked over and prodded the rock with her foot. What are you doing out here? What are you doing out here? We're not allowed to go wandering off on our own. It's very dangerous. I know. That's why I came. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I've been out overnight with Father before. So where exactly are you going? I'm not sure exactly. Uh, But generally, north. Why? To get away from you. Well, you didn't. I think I know where you're going. Can't you ever just leave me alone? No. Not unless you tell me where you're going. Go home, Joshi. Joshi! You're going to find the trees, aren't you? Maybe. So you do believe. I didn't say that. Mom's gonna be angry. No, she won't. She'll understand. What do you mean? Yama said that Mother had to find her own way, too. Don't you think that was just an expression? No. 
If you're going to find the trees, then I'm coming with you. No, you're not. You can't stop me from coming. You're too young to go out on your own. I won't be alone. I'll be with you. I don't need your help. <laughs> That's what you think. When you set off on an expedition, you have to make a plan and carefully pick the things you pack right down to each pot and pan. You don't have any supplies or tools or even a mason jar. It's painfully clear if I wasn't here, you'd never get far. Did you bring water? Of course I did. And how about food? Aha! How far would you get without a biscuit? I'll risk it. Did you even think to bring some rope? Nope. A measuring cup? I can get by without it. I doubt it. A tinder box, some extra socks. You're lucky I came along. Wrong. When you endeavor to cross a desert, you have to travel light. You don't want to take the kitchen sink and every spoon in sight. Look at you clattering over dudes like some bizarre, bizarre. Laugh, <laughs> sure. Maybe I'm younger, but I know how to get by when you're dying of hunger. Don't even try to get in on my biscuit supply. We both know I'm a lot bolder. What I did, you never do. But I'm so much wiser and older. Maybe I knew somehow that you would follow and bring all those things with you, too. Here we are taking a trip together, whether we want to or not. Always need to follow my lead And you need the stuff I've got Maybe alone we were not so hot But now as a team we are I've got to admit I was underprepared If it wasn't for you I would never have dared A sister and brother without one another We never get far What's that noise? I don't hear anything. Just the wind. Yes, the wind. Only it sounds different than at home. Lower. That must be because we're out on the dunes. More echo. I think it's getting louder. Don't worry. The wind is my friend. No, it's not. I've just got a feeling about this, Joshi. I can't explain. You can go home anytime you like, but if you're coming along with me, You've got to trust me. You mean I should believe in you, even though there's no good reason? Right. Okay. Suddenly a sandstorm was upon them. Stinging sand lashed at their eyes as they clung together in the sudden darkness. battered them from all sides, knocking them off their feet. No. Desert sands heaved and rolled like waves on the ocean. Joshi, Joshi, hold my hand! the winds died down. Not a trace of either could be seen. But then, a mysterious man appeared, making his way slowly across the newly settled sands. On his back was a large sack. In front of him, he held a forked stick, grasping the ends in each of his hands and swinging it slowly from side to side. There is water around everywhere, waiting there to be found. Hidden sources abound everywhere for those who know. Water around everywhere. 
Suddenly the tip of the stick began to twitch and the man began to move more quickly, almost as if he were being pulled along by it, until finally... Aha! The man tossed aside his stick and pulling a shovel from his sack, he began to dig furiously until he discovered... Kids! <coughs> Oh, thank you so much, mister. You saved our lives. I'm finding kids now. I didn't think we'd ever get out of there. I have half a mind to put you back, tricking me like that. I suppose you think you're pretty funny. We didn't mean to trick you. And what on earth were you doing hiding out under there? We were caught in a sandstorm. We got buried. How did you ever find us? I found you because you're juicy. What do you mean? I mean you're moist, damp, soggy. Boggy. Juicy. Is he gonna eat us? Wet behind the ears, too. And anything that's the least bit wet, I'll always find it. Why? Because of who I am. Who are you? I'm Bell's Nickel. But more to the point, I'm a water witch. Well, which is it? Yes. Are you a what or a witch? What? So you're a what? I'm a witch. You just said you were a what? When? Just then. You switched. Switch to what? No, to which. What? Which? Wait. I think I see what's going on here. I'm not a what or which. I'm a water witch. Oh. What's that? A water witch is someone who can find water hidden underground. How do you do that? I guess you could say it's by a kind of magic. You can do magic? Sometimes. Where's your magic wand? I don't have a wand, but I do have a Y. A what? No, it's called a Y. Why? That's right. He means, why is it called that? Ah, I see. When you're looking for a rationale, then why is the question you ask? But when you're looking for a moist locale, the tool that is best for the task is this. This is the why of a witch. Oh. Well, show us what it does. No, I don't need it right now. When do you use it? When, you say. When you're traveling across the sand and many a mile you have marched. If your traveling was poorly planned, there's a threat of a throat that's parched. And when you had that yen, you would be glad you had on hand a stick to scratch that particular itch. That is the when of the wild witch. There you are without a drop to drink. You're scared and prepared for the worst And as you're standing there you stop to think Am I gonna die of thirst? Just imagine if a tool could tell Right below you is a cool wet well Though the land where you stand looks as dry as a ditch that is the where of the wind of the why of a witch. Now perhaps you wonder, how does the why of a witch work? That I'm about to tell you by and by. When the water's under, that's when the tip will twitch, jerk. That is the how of the where of the when of the why. Can I try? No! Not just everybody's got the knack to tell where the well her lies. Don't imagine that the average hack is wise in the ways of wise. I'm especially inclined professionally. Finding water is my niche. And that is the who of the how of the where of the when of the why of a witch. Yes! I am the who of the how of the where of the when of the why of a witch. And that's where we pause in Maya and Joshi's journey for now. Keep listening to the next episode for more.